Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm here with the amazing Alex Arthur. Good to see you again, buddy. And you, my we, man. We spoke about it for an hour off camera here. I know. So what are we going to talk about now? Waiting on your stupid camera charging, that's, that's the problem. That's what it is, that's, that's the problem. Uh, first of all, Happy New Year. Thank you. Uh, and you. How was 2019? Guys, it was very, very good. It was very good year in, in terms of the, the, the club getting up and running. We became affiliated, obviously, with mm -hmm. Amateur Boxing Scotland and the guys started to fight for treble A, so it was good. We had some good wins last year, aye? Good, well, good let's, let's, let's go back into 2019. I, I don't want you to go too far back in the year because it's probably hard to remember every fight, yeah. but the tail end of last year, we uh, saw Josh Taylor become yeah. a unified uh, world champion. We saw also saw Anthony Joshua yeah. uh, get his belts back, two-time yeah. world heavyweight champion of the world. I mean, just give me your thoughts back on them two huge fights. Aye, well, I mean, in terms, of, in terms of boxing, I'm glad you said that because, like, thinking back on 2019, obviously I was... I worked almost every weekend mm -hmm. with his own every weekend. So trying to remember all the fights <laughs> and all that paperwork and all the notes and, and everything like that. So it was a crazy year for, for me for boxing. Um but aye, the standout the standout moments were of course Josh Taylor um, becoming undisputed or unified unified, yeah. unified world champion, not quite undisputed yet. Hopefully that's still to come. Um and Anthony Joshua re retaining the titles and uh, it was the both both massive nights really. And in, in, in terms of the guy's individual careers as well, um, a lot of people wrote jo Joshua off, thought mm -hmm. that he was going to get beat a second time. I would, I would probably say that I, th that I would have thought that as well. But then again, when Andy Ruiz uh, said afterwards that he just parted far too much, and mm -hmm. you can understand why the fights were really close together, where Joshua would have been back on the ball, mm -hmm. where he would have been celebrating his victory. So and that was his biggest push as well. Five, of six, course, seven, it was nine, massive. I bought some new. Rolls Royces and, and <laughs> ate some mere tacos and why not? It is. Why not? Eh? Churros, I know, I know, fair play to him. Uh -huh. Fair play to him. Um, and then obviously, more importantly, up here in Scotland, uh -huh. we didn't really care about anybody else, up, us Scots up here. <laughs> we, we, we stick to our end. Um, Josh obviously pulled off the, the massive, massive victory and winning the Super Six and the country was buzzing, wasn't it? Really? And, and, uh, he, he, he was in, it was a tremendous fight as well. And in, in, in every sense, like tactically, um, the way that they engaged, the way that they kind of, it was like a physical conversation, both of them were yeah, changing yeah. their tactics. One guy trying to get the edge, at one point, progress looking like he was going to come on strong, Josh firing back, just brilliant to watch, just great. But I want to stay, before we talk about Josh, obviously there's big news with Josh, uh, obviously yeah, a new promotional yeah. thing in mm -hmm. the advisory deal with MTK. Before we talk about that, I just want to stay in 2019 and if you can sort of like go back to your notes, I'll go back to some because uh -huh. you have commented a lot of fights this year. Yeah. I want to give you, other than the Josh Taylor fight and Anthony Joshua, bloody, bloody, blah, 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 what was the standout fight for you and who do you think is the is the prospect coming through for 2020? Who should we look out for in 2020? Who should we look out for in 2020? Oh. Put you on the spot a little bit, but. It's a tricky one. I did see some of the, I did see some decent kids over in America. The Kazakhstan lads mm -hmm. that are fighting over there at the minute are really impressive as well. Yulusinov. Yulusinov is probably one of the standouts <coughs> for me. Mm -hmm. There's been a few really good lads over there. Sadly, um, the lad that beat Patrick Day was also very, very good. Mm -hmm. I was impressed by him as well. It was a terrible ending of the fight. Um, but I've seen so many, it's so hard to think, but I've seen so many yeah. good prospects. But the Kazakhstan lads did stand out for me a wee bit. You yeah. think they're worth to watch out for the... Aye, the certainly. And there's a few of them as well. There's yeah. not just one or two. I think there's a super middleweight as well that's short and chunky, but very quick and agile. And their ring generalship's brilliant as well. They can all punch quite hard. Um, it's got to be interesting to see their development over the next year or so. Aye. Well, let's just talk about then. Big news for Josh Taylor. Uh, promotional deal with top rank Bob Arum. Yeah. I mean, Bob Arum. We've got, 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 got to cut back and get... A, a bit of shout out as well to Lee McGregor and Cash Fruit oh, for the fight we, that we they done, put we, on. We done a bit after that. Aye, uh, because yeah. the, what a fight that was! Yeah. I mean, it was brilliant. I mean, on the night I was I was blown away on the night by the fight, and just the the sheer aptitude that both of them showed. They were the both of them really did show they're both world class fighters, mm -hmm. and they showed it on the night despite all the controversy into who we thought won or who I thought won on the night and. You know, it was just one of the one it wasn't of the a robbery, fights. Though, was it, it wasn't a robbery. No. It wasn't a robbery. It's stupid to say that it was a robbery. But I did have cash for it winning. There's no point in me going back on mm -hmm. what I said originally. I had him winning by three rounds. I thought he was an in general. I thought he controlled the tempo of the fight. I thought he landed the cleaner shots. I thought his defensive movements and his patterns were better than Lee's. But Lee's desire and his work rate and his and his punch volume was was world class as well. Mm -hmm. So it was just one of the fights that. 
it was just I mean if they fought again it could go the other way but it could look like Lee probably does more yeah. or done more on this occasion it's just one of their fights it's their styles as well yeah exactly I think both of them will want in the rematch I oh mean, aye they both if, will aye for a bigger title maybe the European title you'd like to think that, so because yeah. it was a proper world class yeah. fight it was good a world for, class as you say, fight good for Scotland we care oh, about it was own. brilliant <laughs> fantastic it really was it was something else aye well I, I think uh, Cash is signed with Eddie Hearn now oh you know what I mean so yeah. there'll be a build up with, you know, aye like of with course fighters, so. oh aye and Eddie doesn't go to the, the small hall, so no, he, well, he doesn't. Well, he does go to the old call, but that's just aye, but aye. if he comes back up here with cash, then he's definitely going to get the. Aye, hard it's likely to be a big one, and I think that they'll they'll want to build both guys back up again mm-hmm. and get them. I mean, they don't really need built up. They showed what they can do. Exactly. So I think the next time they fight, it's got to be pretty spectacular. Well, I'll go back to my, my original question then, Josh Sorry, Taylor. Not no, sure, yeah. You're, you're the star of the show, Alex. I'm just nearly here. Uh, yeah, Josh Taylor, obviously. I spoke with Josh uh, beginning of last week. Yeah. Um, signed with top rank uh-huh. Bob Arum and Bob yep. Arum, uh, Muhammad Ali promoter. Uh, I mean, goes way back. So and obviously he's got the advisory deal Shirley with MTK. So yeah. Quickly, your thoughts on that? Aye, ah, it's, it's, it's a massive move. It's a great step. And you know, I did speak to Josh the other day via text, and you know, he's uh, it's he's made Josh has made this move. He's thinking about himself now. Yeah. Which is rightly He's so. He's in that stage of his career. Ah, he has to be. He has to be thinking about himself. He has to be thinking about himself, and and I think he's done the best thing for Josh Taylor, mm-hmm. and and for his future. And for, so I mean, how can you knock him for that? Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, there's been loads of things said about his loyalty and the fact that the McGuigans have brought him up throughout. You know, the, for the start, his very start of his career, and that Shane's trained him, and you know, they they looked like they had a pretty good team there, and everything was functioning pretty well. But you know he's thinking about himself and he's thinking about his own future and, and I think it's it's just like that's that's the modern day age in boxing and you know fighters are putting themselves first now and rightly so. Yeah. The thing with Josh as well is obviously the trainer situation. What's your thoughts on who who do you think Josh should go with? I mean, that's well, I mean, I, I, I said weeks and weeks ago, Freddie Roach. Um, mm. You know, I I developed a relationship with Freddie Roach back in the early two thousands and you know Terry McCormack was who is Josh's was Josh's amateur trainer. Um, was like an assistant coach of mine and, and I worked with Terry back in Leaf Victoria days as well and you know they all have a good relationship they're pretty close and you know Terry maintained his relationship with Freddie and I just thought that it would probably make sense that, that Josh goes or did did go would go with Freddie Roach I mean he's, he's probably st- well, he's still with Terry mm-hmm. Josh and Terry are, 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 are quite tight so you know they, when Josh is back home he always goes to train with Terry yeah. so I just thought that that was probably the natural a natural move for both guys of course it would mean Josh moving to the States because Freddie's stable's pretty big and mm. he doesn't really leave America for that many people so obviously he's, he's declining health and stuff as well and it would be an issue yeah. I feel as well for Josh so um, I, I just thought Freddie Roach would probably be the natural the natural and um, progressive move but you know you never know we've got world class trainers here in the UK definitely um, if I was still fighting and it was my choice to pick a UK based trainer I would go with Adam Booth mm. Um I think he's fantastic. Um, I love his strategic mindset. I like the way that he goes about his his training. You know, he, he, he gives his fighters um, plenty of rest, plenty of recovery. He works with what they're good at. Doesn't try and change anyone. I think he's very, very good. Talking about progressive moves and whatnot. Obviously, going forward with Josh Taylor. I mean, you sort of hinted at the fact undisputed yeah. at the beginning of the interview. I mean. Undisputed for Josh against Ramirez, uh-huh. uh, he's got this mandatory against uh-huh. Kong Spong. I think his name is yep. the boy from Thailand. Um, I think that will be in the May, in the April, beginning of the May time. Once uh-huh. he gets out of the way, if Ramirez gets past Postal, uh-huh. um, then hopefully we can get this uh, undisputed fight against uh-huh. Ramirez, both with top rank. You said before you think Josh beats Ramirez. Uh-huh. I'm guessing you uh-huh. still think the same. Uh, of course, I mean, uh, I think that the Postal fights a hard fight mm-hmm. um, for Ramirez I think it's a tough fight I think stylistically and the way that, that Postol fights his Eastern European style stand up straight I think that he'll, he'll give Ramirez a lot of trouble mm-hmm. <laughs> didn't he be surprised if he pulls off a victory but you know we've, as we've seen when he when he beat Hooker I, I called that fight with the zone as well and mm-hmm. You know he's he's unbelievably aggressive, and once he gets a once he builds up a, a head of steam and he starts getting the combinations and the punches flowing, he's he's pretty formidable. Definitely. So, but I feel that because of Postel's Eastern European style, you know, he'll be a couple of shots and you know a step back at the range, and he's got that long reach, and he's got very good time in Postel as well. He's he's an experienced cagey campaigner, mm-hmm. so I do think that he could give Ramirez loads of trouble. Good. Oh. 
So you, you, you think Ramirez will come through possibly, right? I think he probably should come through. Yeah. I think youth and, you know, just energy and, and, you know, exuberance and the fact that, you know, he's world champion and, you know, and he's, he's, he's just in that situation now where he's the, kind of like the man. So I think that that's probably the thing that will help push him through. But I still think it's a tricky, tricky fight. Yeah. Obviously, hopefully, Josh has said himself that if he becomes undisputed world champion, he's probably more than likely going to vacate all the belts, Aye, win yeah, them, yeah, vacate them, yeah. and then move up to one four seven. Aye, it would make perfect sense. And there's to talk me. already, like over the state side, um, um, Max Kellerman who does it works for ESPN out there. Yeah, uh-huh. he, uh, he's mentioned Crawford's name yeah, already has a possible yeah, opponent. Yeah, I mean, is that? Too, Aye, I mean, I mean, that's Josh to make his one four seven debut. I guess well, maybe, 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 maybe his one four seven debut. Yeah, I mean, you could. Uh, you, that's it's arguable that he should that he should jump straight into that fight with mm. possibly and probably the best pound for pound fighter in the world. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, I mean, it's really arguable now because a lot of the guys are like equally as good. It's not like with Floyd, like Floyd was a clear standout. Yeah, um, as pound for pound king, but it's a wee bit different now. Um, you know, all these all these guys, these top five guys, are all quite. Close the together. The aye, 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 aye. Of course, can it, even Canelo's. Canelo's. I, I think Canelo's as as close to unbeatable mm-hmm. just now as he's ever going to be. Um, and and like in terms of again in terms of boxing styles and who's your favourite to watch. For me right now, it would be Canelo mm-hmm. because like I can relate to a lot of the stuff that he does as a fighter, and I think that um, I think he's the, he's the, my favourite fighter to watch certainly. Is he the best pound for pound fighter in the world right now? It's arguable, mm-hmm. you know. It's arguable. There's, there's, there's three, isn't there? If you're going to aye. say three, there's going to be Canelo, Crawford, and, and, Loma, and you can just and, and Loma, aye, and, and circle them uh-huh. based on their last performance. Exactly. Or their, you know, I think that's what people do. Like, aye. as soon as Crawford fights, they've put yeah. Crawford one, Loma, aye, 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 one, aye. Canelo back. Up. Seems to be the way just now, yeah. and that's quite good. That's good for boxing as well. Definitely, yeah, keeps well, you, it you super interesting. Canelo, there. I mean, uh-huh. there's a lot of talk, and I mean a lot of talk on uh-huh. Twitter and whatnot that. He, for a single demand Aye. by May, Billy Joe yeah. Saunders. Yeah. I mean, this is the big fight that Billy's been screwed for. Aye, do you know what? no mug and he can... Oh, no, he's I mean? a very, very good fighter. Please, come on. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Olympian, world champion, two-weight, you know, fantastic, talented southpaw. You know, on his night, he's, he's tremendous. You know, he's had a few below-par performances lately, but I think that's got a lot to do with the fact that that fights that he's probably struggling to get up for. I, I think, think he the, needs a... Ben, the opponent better than Billy Joe. He needs a Canelo mm-hmm. now. He needs a Callum Smith. Mm-hmm. Can it, uh, Billy Joe Saunders needs that now in his career he needs it desperately yeah. because what might happen is we might see Billy Joe Saunders lose to somebody because he's no motivated to fight them mm-hmm. it happens it's happened it happened to me mm-hmm. it's a possibility that you're just really know that up for a fight that you're just didn't really care, <laughs> don't care like, oh and you it, think you can breeze through it so oh like aye aye definitely thing, yeah. aye that you maybe <clears throat> maybe not take your weight seriously or you didn't take your span seriously or you know just your general condition and something because you're like oh this, this is a fight yeah. I really didn't want and and if you take your eye off the ball and you miss that you can lose mm-hmm. and I lost in that fashion as well so I know that it's possible um, so I uh, Billy Joe Saunders needs that kind of fight now right. I think it's likely going to happen well, it would be brilliant it would be great to see what's your thoughts on that fight then you said well I mean, I mean again like like technically right now I think Canelo is is, is probably the best most efficient fighter in the world and mm. the reason I say that is obviously because of the fact that he can he's moved through the weights. You know, he's shown he's got unbelievable punch power. Um, he's got very good hand speed. His ring generalship now is absolutely excellent. His defensive qualities are second to none. Mm-hmm. And he can take a shot. We've seen him nailed by Kovalev and Treble G. And, you know, they bounce off him. You mm-hmm. know, he's got a neck like a, like a young like Mike a Tyson. Like you now, look at <laughs> trying to lose a bit of weight actually, making me feel bad here um, so I I mean um, it's, it's such a hard fight Canelo's a nightmare for anybody uh, right now he's a nightmare for anybody and you'd have to obviously and I would of course put him the favourite as well over Billy Joe Son. I'd put my favourite over anybody even Callum Smith that's what I was going to say because uh, there's two names to be mentioned yeah. Callum Smith and Billy Joel Billy Joel looks yeah. like the more likely one but uh, being that Callum is the 6 foot 3 uh, weight, uh, uh, he's, 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 a, he's, he's got a killer left hook yeah he has uh, do you think Who's got the better chance against Canelo? Style Bradley? wise, I'd probably say Billy Joe Saunders uh-huh. has got the best chance. Style wise, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, Canelo, size wise, do you aye, we'll size wise him, Callum obviously. We'll give him, you think he can give Canelo problems with his size? I think he can. Mm-hmm. I think he can. But I mean, we've seen uh, we've seen we've seen Canelo take on Rocky Field, and I mean, it's not no, I mean, it's not true. the same mm-hmm. kind of gig. But 
you know, Callum dispatched the Rocky a wee bit easier than what Canelo did. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a it's, it's a hard one. That's a hard one. Callum probably a bit below par in his last performance as well. Again, um, probably due to the fact that it was up against somebody that he was struggling to get motivated to mm-hmm. fight. Most people thought he was going to beat Ryder quite easy. Ryder put up the fight of his life, and a lot of people think he won the fight, but I think a lot of that was mistaken for the fact that he just put up a very good performance yeah. against a guy that he was supposed to know have a relative chance against. Well, let's talk about, obviously, the heavyweight division. You know yeah. I like the heavyweight division. Aye. Um, Let's just go straight to the press conference was last night, Wild uh-huh. and Fury. Did you see the press yeah, conference last aye, night? Aye, aye, we've seen a wee bit. Yeah. Uh, the boys always keep me up. Uh, yeah, that's, me the, that's the good thing having boys. Aye, they I keep know. Me they, loop, aye, they? they keep me in the loop. They sent me the Instagram stuff. Of course, when you're commentating every weekend and you're in the gym most days, you're, but then the boys always ping me across the, the press conferences and stuff. And Aye, I did see it. And um, I, I, still think, I still think Tyson has a psychological and mental edge over Wilder. I think that Wilder normally holds that over other people, but on this occasion he doesn't. Mm. And I think that there's a little bit of nerves around Wilder's face. Don't know, like it just doesn't seem like that cocksure, confident way that he does with everyone else. Mm-hmm. And I think that Tyson gets in most people's heads, but I think he's certainly um, messed Wilder up there a wee bit. I think the fact that he got up <laughs> the way that that's he did. That, I think that's what. Aye, I, mean, I think that's yeah. messed Wilder up as well. As Wilder thinking can I actually flatten this guy yeah. because if I can I lose round after round after round on occasion so if I don't flatten this guy I'm maybe going to lose and I think that that's the Do you think that's going to happen? Um, it's hard to say it's hard to say it'd be interesting to see I like to watch things materialise mm-hmm. rather than call them right at the start I mean, you get you get a gut feeling and you break down fighters attributes and their styles and, and then you sort of like mix and match and and you see what's what, but I like to see things as they as as they transpire throughout mm-hmm. training camp, right up to the way in before I like to really say that's what I think. Mm-hmm. And you know, Tyson has got some changes in his training camp as well. He's he switched trainer. Um, Sugar Hill. Aye. And he's Andy Lee. Yep, yep. Who's a fantastic guy. He's he's a, he's a legend, and and I'm a big Andy Lee fan. I think his commentary is fantastic as well, and he's a lovely fellow. And you know, it's, I'm a big Andy Lee fan. So. Um, I think that it's, it's possibly a good move. Why why he moved? I, I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of the whole thing. It looked like things were working fantastically well with Ben, ben with Ben yeah. Davidson, and um, you know I think that that uh, I think that that looked like a great partnership. They looked like they had real good chemistry there. Mm-hmm. Um, even even seeing them work in the corner in the gym, they looked like they really did have something special. So whatever's happened there, maybe Tyson just needs a fresh change or. I'm not too sure, but um, so that that can play a part in things. That can that can certainly change the dynamics of a, a training camp. Can change the dynamics of a fight as well, and um, tactically and stuff. Will ty- Tyson try and change things, or or will he or will he stick to what he does best? Hit and move, frustrate, um, tie people up. You know, um, keep them guessing with mm-hmm. his herky jerky movements and style and. If, if, showboating as well. Aye, he's showboating as well. Of course, of course. Behind his back. Aye, and providing he doesn't get caught, there's no way that he can lose the fight. Mm. If he doesn't get, if he doesn't get banged over, um, then I don't think he can lose. Obviously, yeah. Joshua holds Anthony Joshua won his belts back. Yeah. <sighs> Looking at as a selfish point of view, from your point of view, yeah. Who would you like? Joshua to face if the winner of oh, the winner. Tyson Fury. Do you oh, think would you rather Wilder Joshua? Or no, Fury no, I would Joshua? rather I would rather Fury Joshua. Fury Joshua. Aye, aye. I mean, we're here, we're here in the UK, and mm. you know, it's very how how often do, you, do we get a Lennox Lewis versus Frank Bruno? Or, nah, yeah. You know, so it's it's very very rare, and I mean, the boys are the two top heavyweights in the world right now, Baron Wilder and a few others, Dylan White, honourable mention, and, and a few of the other guys as well coming through, but. Let's look at the guys that have got belts and the guy that should have all the belts. It was Tyson Fury. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when you when you do look at it like that and you break it down in that fashion, that oh, there goes the, the boys. This is lads. Aye, when you break it down in that fashion, you do you do get more of an idea of, like what kind of era we're in mm-hmm. and, and what's actually happening in the heavyweight division. That two of the best heavyweights in the world are through right here in the United Kingdom. Mm. So, of course that's the fight that we want to see. So Fury beats Fury beats Wilder, thank you. Make the fight with Joshua, and then we find out who the man is, don't we? That's it, that's what we all want. That's what we all want. That's what yeah, we all want. That's what we all want. 
You mentioned honourable mention Dillian White coming through. I yeah. mean, obviously all the stuff that happened with him back in July with the drug thing. Uh-huh. And blah, blah, blah. He's all, yeah. he's got it all clear. To I, yeah, that yeah. All, that's no, yeah, no need to talk about that. But going forward for Dillian White, is he? Uh-huh. In that, is he? There's obviously Wilder, Joshua Fury, aye. and then below that, who do you have? Do you have aye, Dillian I would White, have, I would have Usyk, White. I would have White. I would. I of course White. Usyk can you go to Chisora? Mention again mm-hmm. Chisora, even though I think he's he's maybe not quite. Up there with you, boys. Look at that. There's the champs there, look. <laughs> <laughs> so, aye, it's um, it is one of these situations where um, you've got... It, he's not been treated that well, mm. Dylan White. You know, it's, it's, he's been a wee bit... You know, he's, he's been left to drag it out, really, hasn't he? It's yeah. such a shame. He's deserved that shot for a while now. Um, so, I'm quite sure that I think um, once Wilder and, and Fury are, are done... and. Joshua maybe gets that next one out of the way and then hopefully we see Dillian in one of the bigger names. It'd be great to see as well. Dylan White Perfecting, you like that fight? Ah, yeah, I do like that fight. That's that's a that's a Dillian White knockout by mm-hmm. life hook for me at some point or other. Aye. I mean I mean twenty twenty is gonna be a big year. I mean your boys are here. Yeah. Max doing his usual winning every fight he's in. Aye. Junior's Looks like a light heavyweight now. What's <laughs> he does? <laughs> he has a light heavyweight. <laughs> trying to be a middleweight, which is uh, which is another issue that we're working so on right Triple now. So for Triple H, I mean, obviously the boys, the Scottish champions. Aye, the nationals up. and stuff are coming up. Um, what a good finish to the end of the season. Macklin went over and fought the Russian number one in, in, in Dublin and had a great first round knockout. Or a fantastic body shot. He, he fought really well. He was obviously undefeated again last year. He's still undefeated anyway, but he had a great year last year. And so did a lot of the boys. You know, a lot of the boys have had great starts. Um, we've got the Inters in a week or so. Uh-huh. We've got Mac, we've got Saul Saw, um, former world kickboxing champion yeah, yeah, who switched to boxing. He's a yeah. brilliant wee fighter. Tremendous Southpaw. He's our, he's our version of Edwin Valero. He's a huge puncher and a Southpaw and great work rate. And um, we've also got wee Liam Flynn as well who moved from Midlothian to us. So um, I have got four Nenters next week, then they open a few weeks later. Mac will be gone for, I think, his third open title. Um, well, that'll be three to three if he, if he wins, when he wins. He'll say, aye, I'll, I'll get around for saying that. So, um, aye, it's um, a big season ahead. British for him this year as well. And um, Aye, it's, it's dead exciting. Dead exciting stuff. You seem, you seem excited, you've got a big smile on your face. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to come to the media. So I think I'm going to come and have a look about. And I've not been. I, I'm, I used to be into the amateur site, so the amateur scene. Yeah. But now I'm so so far away from it. I don't know who's know, coming through know, and what's still happening. So I'm going to de- delve right back into yeah. it. Yeah. Well, it's the same for me. I'm mixed uh, up in both now. Obviously, working for yeah, the zone exactly, and, yeah. and and commentating almost every single weekend um, on on their fights has um, has has got me mixed up in both worlds again. But it is a lot of fun and I'm Definitely. really enjoying it. It's oh, great. good, as long it's as you great. enjoy it. Well, have I missed anything, Alex? Have we talked about everything? No, really, I think we've covered most things, my man. Aye. People Love. will maybe stop stopping us in the street now asking for the next interview. Exactly, exactly. See, Aye. that must be doing something right I now. know, eh? It's, it's <laughs> gets, when's your next interview on iPhone with Andrew? I don't know. I'll phone on the now. I'll phone on the now, aye. I'll phone bring me that coffee. The second, that he, the second he mentions coffee and muffin, it's on. <laughs> exactly. It's that was on. a big muffin I got you today, That like. was a beauty. But that was just a whole Blueberry. berry. Aye. That was just a berry. I know. That was amazing. It's so healthy. Oh, yes, aye. There's no sugar content in that. <laughs> <laughs> As always, Class, my thanks, bro. champ, and thanks. thanks, Five Pill TV, and uh, I'll catch up with you soon. Thanks, Alex.